Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Coons, your host of Pie to Pie, sitting here taking a break from opening the shop at Hot Tongue to bring you this brand new episode. Very exciting episode. Caitlin and Daniel from Ronan, right off of Melrose. It was a fantastic conversation in their beautiful restaurant. They've been in the game for a long time, working at Alimento, Soto, and they are no stranger to the Los Angeles restaurant scene. We talked about Coachella and how they have been a vendor the past three years and what that takes and how they run that whole operation. 3,600 dough balls, just pure insanity. We talked about branding, where Ronan came from and their sigil for the brand itself, which I had an aha moment when Caitlin was explaining to me what and and how they came up with it and, and what it is. Very cool brand. It's a very amazing restaurant, a beautiful build out. They have a mixer I have never seen outside of Pizza Expo, which I could probably watch mix. I, I think it's a, is it a fork mixer or it was a diving arm mixer, just probably making them luscious, luscious dough balls. We talked about cold fermentation, high hydration, situations, meditations. All right, running the restaurant as a married couple must be hard, but they make it look easy. They just give such sage answers, thoughtful answers, and that's that's the magic of Ronan. Anyways, queen, fat bottom girls forever. Ronan, you are the champions of the world. Bicycle, bicycle, I want to ride my bicycle right to Ronan. If you're in LA, you best, don't even play around, don't be playing. They have a beautiful patio, hit the brunch, get the Philippe's calzone, Taylor Swift forever. Caitlin knows what I'm talking about. It's me, I'm the problem, it's me. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronan. Before we start the pod, I want to shout out our sponsor, Zabs. Zabs is incredible. Both their hot sauce sit on every table at Hot Tongue. Their St. Augustine and Original are mind-bending. I'm talking naturally sweet heat and their signature slow burn. They got this secret pepper from Florida called the Dot Heel. It is hot, it is sweet, it is perfect on pizza, on eggs, on anything. And I know that anyone who tries it is gonna love it. If you don't know about Zabs, you gotta check them out. And you know who put me on their hot honey, which I think is better than all of them? Nick Camacho. Shout out the man, the myth, and the legend for putting me on this. I didn't even like hot honey before this, but Zabs changed my mind. I wouldn't put it on every table at Hot Tongue if I didn't believe in how much it could enhance pizza. Do yourself a favor and go check out Zabs. You will not be disappointed. Anyways, I'll stop talking now. Let's get to the pod. Let's go. How many people do you have working here? 23. Well, that's a big staff. Mm -hmm. Have you always been open seven days? No. We started open six days and then we kind of like switched between we were Monday off for a while. No, when we opened, we were Tuesday off. We were off. Tuesday off in the beginning. So we thought we, we'd yeah. be like an industry night on Monday. Yeah. And that worked for a while. And then I don't really know when we switched to Monday or why it mattered. Because they're both kind of a toss-up, When well, we right? switched during COVID, I think we were only open five days a week during COVID. You opened in 2019, right? Yeah. No, 2018. 2018. It was... We was it late September, 2018? September yeah, September 2018. 2018. Okay. There we go. So you had a... Kind of a little less than a year and a half under your belt before but we really you guys didn't shut down. hit our stride until September 2019. The first year was, I mean, yeah. I guess as it is for everyone, it was a roller coaster. We and had then like a, financially, yeah. we started getting stable in September 2019. And what does financially stable mean? Seeing some months that are black yeah, okay. <laughs> versus all yeah. months that are red. And then in the beginning, it's like you have to be so overstaffed because you don't really know. Like none of the systems really like you could imagine it. You can say like, hey, I have this person here and that person there and this person there. And then you're like, oh, shit, maybe I need more people. And then it's busy the first six months. So you're like, maybe I need an extra server. Maybe I need an extra back server. Maybe I need a can't risk cook. A bad maybe I need a because... back bar guy and and nobody's really used to it. And there's no like nothing streamlined yet. And then <clears throat> the business dips off after the first six months because that's how LA is. It's just like hype for six months. And then you really have to like work to get business after that. And 
we're like, dude, we can't afford to have this server in the back bar and the prep guy and the this guy and then that guy. So it's it's it kind of like went de- as the business went down, the staffing went down. And then as the business went back up, we were like, well, maybe we actually could do this without those people also. So yeah. mm-hmm. then we started getting like a little bit busier, but with the same amount of staff or maybe one more person, you know, where we needed it. But then that kind of helped offset the the loss in, in revenue or the or the gain the, the gap, you know, the gain in revenue and the loss the lowered expense out. Have you continued to like keep it in, in that in that yeah. vein since yeah. since after opening? We yeah. run really tight and I think at the beginning we wanted service to be we were making a name for ourselves. We yeah. didn't have a reputation at that point. And so it was like everything has to be dialed in and good. And now we can get away with a lot in terms of service because we're a pizzeria. Our servers are great and everyone's really friendly and very engaged and does the maximum that they can. But we also like, I don't offer fresh plates after every course. You're at a pizzeria. If you want them, ask someone for them and we'll bring them to you. But this isn't fine dining. So, I mean, we serve the pizzas on the China. It's not like we're serving the pizzas on those metal plates, but yeah, you know, it's like slightly we, we elevated, can get away with you know. a lot of things that another restaurant at this caliber couldn't yeah. just for the very reason that it's pizza. And was that on purpose? No, we kind of wanted it to be a more upscale place in the beginning. Like, yeah. Fans like pizza with a bow tie on. Yeah. Um, because a lot of Italian restaurants are, you know, they have pizza, but pasta is like the king of Italian restaurants. You can't like, and everyone's like, are you going to have pasta? Are you going to do pasta? No, we were like, pizza's good. Like pizza is a food. You can focus, focus on that. It's yes. a great thing. Yes. It's a wonderful thing. You don't need to like, it doesn't need to just be like there because you have to have it because Italian, you know what I mean? Well, it's interesting. I feel like a lot of time pizza just gets put on certain yeah. menus. Like they'll just, hey, just yeah. fucking throw a pizza on have there. a couple yeah. pizzas. Yeah. 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 And you can tell that it's just throw a couple pizzas yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, well, this... Your plates and the pizza, it does look elevated. Mm-hmm. So like in the space, like you come here and you you do get a vibe and it does yeah. feel it feels high end, especially mm-hmm. where y'all are are located. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of you get the best of both worlds. Being yeah. off the street is also kind of like nice because you're disconnected from like maybe the shenanigans that are happening on Melrose. Yeah, But we definitely want it to feel like you've come someplace special. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm always really happy when somebody comes and celebrates a birthday here. I'm like, wow, that's a really big mm-hmm. honor that somebody had all the restaurants in the city to choose from and chose here. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's weeks where we have like birthday after birthday after birthday and you mm-hmm. kind of can get desensitized to it, but you have to realize like it's one in 365 days. It's cool. Yeah. That's a good th- way of thinking about it. Then they want to spend it with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with um, Valerie Gordon, Valerie Confections? Mm-mm. It's like a, it's like little chocolates and little desserts and it's like a, it's like a chocolate shop. I don't know how you describe it, but she comes here for every, like every family thing, every kid's birthday, every anniversary, every, and she just like, I just saw her at the market yesterday and she was just like, ah, oh, Ronan, I love it at Ronan, God. <laughs> and it's just like, whether it's a person like that or, 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 you know, like a regular person or whatever, it's, it's, it's nice, you know, they come here and a little candle in their ice cream scoop and they love it probably do get desensitized and you do and i mean just the way you put it I, you know to think about to think about how special that is mm-hmm. because some people really value their birthday i don't know yeah. if you guys have a friend that's like it's my birthday it's, bir- it's, it's my birthday I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. okay all right <laughs> to quote taylor swift uh you know, those birthday month people you know yeah. and so when yeah. it gets to that day Birthday month. It, it was actually week. my birthday on Tuesday, so we're still in. Oh, it. oh my yeah. gosh! So well, happy careful. birthday! Thank you. She celebrates her half birthday. Mm-hmm. Well, well the, the, the restaurant age, like uh, industry will age you. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I feel like I looked pretty good two years ago, and yeah. I've been in it for close to 15 years. But mm-hmm. I think hot tongue, like it was like yeah. I was Obama after his presidency. <laughs> I got like I started to dye my hair because I got grays <laughs> on the side, and like I'm looking down and being like, I don't think you're looking very good. So. <laughs> It, uh, it's not an easy industry. Yeah. No, we got back. We went on a our first vacation, just the two of us, 
in seven since our honeymoon, so seven years ago. And we got back and everybody saw Daniel and they were like, dude, you look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like three days in the sun yeah. and a bunch of margaritas will fix a lot. Yeah, dude. That's yeah. great. It's like, yeah, <laughs> I washed off a ton of stress. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that's what you're that's what you're seeing. Yeah. Your first vacation in how long? Seven years. Yeah. Okay. Like like child free vacation. Yeah. Which a vacation with children is Obviously, not, not really a vacation. No, that it's is not a vacation. Parenting being a parent in a different somewhere location. else. Yeah, it's it's almost harder sometimes because you're like you don't know where your stuff is. You don't know like where the pans are. You don't know. Well, I know. I'm like I'd rather just stay home. <laughs> yeah, this is familiar. Yeah, <laughs> I know where the snack cabinet is. <laughs> yeah, I, I have my lifelines. Yeah, I, yeah, in the yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. You have both been in the restaurant industry for a minute, and like setting off and doing your own thing. Did you? Did, is this something that y'all had talked about for a long time or like when was the opportune moment knowing like, okay, let's, let's go off, let's do our own thing. You know, how does, how does that come about? I think it, our situation is pretty unique. We had started talking about it. We were both working at Alimento and, um, we opened Alimento. So we dealt with all the challenges of the opening, but we weren't the owner. Um, mm -hmm. so you know, it kind of became a conversation of why are we doing this for other people, putting so much work in, doing their dream. What's our dream? Um, we took a trip to New York and we ate at Roberta's and we just fell in love. It was, you know, how many years ago now? 12 years ago. 2014? Yes. Okay. Yes. It was um, before it expanded. It was that one location in yeah. Bushwick, yeah. kind of grungy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we loved it. And we were like, this a little bit scary to doesn't get to, exist like in L.A. <laughs> this is the vibe. There's loud music. Um, you don't get to complain about where you're sitting, but the food's amazing and it's just fun. So that was the inspiration. And we started to kind of talk about a concept. Um, three months later, I became pregnant with our first child, which was unplanned, beautiful gift. Um, but I was really faced with how am I going to continue working in the restaurant industry as a woman with a child? How do I do that? So I very be quick, quickly became the driving force of we need our own business because I'm not I love my job. I love the industry, but I'm not willing to do it for someone else and have to make choices between my job and my family. So Daniel was very kind. He was like, look, I'm happy. I love my job, um, but I understand what you're saying. And if you make this happen, I'll do it with you. So then how did you make it happen? I got a broker. I started looking at spaces. I started shopping. She's um, a professional person. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> pirate captain. <laughs> So she was like, you're a good cook. Well, it's basically like it's her business and she hired me to be the chef. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I found talent and I capitalized. How long did that process of like finding the space, like figuring it out? Did you have to did you have to raise capital or take on investors? We found the space that took about a year. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I was especially active. I had a newborn at home. So yeah, I, I mean, as kind active of, as you could be. Yeah, yeah, I would just get the emails and look at the spaces and nothing really struck my fancy because everything was new construction, which looking back would have been very appealing. But I wanted that authentic, something with character vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and then this space came up. It was actually probably the first space I think we even went out to and saw in person yeah. besides a drive by. Yeah. And... I loved it. I loved that it was off the street. I loved that it, you had to go down a couple steps to get into it. It felt New York-y to me in the way that I wanted it yeah. to. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in LA, so I love being on Melrose Avenue. I still have that uh, 90s kid vibe where I think it's but cool to be on Melrose. You're a New Yorker inside. Yeah, I am. She's I like want to be. New York, she's like a New York bubble surrounded by a California person. So we, yeah, we, I always think this about restaurants is find the space and let the restaurant come from that. You know, obviously we had an idea of what we wanted to do, but so much of that was also dictated by the space. Yeah. Um, then we started raising money. We're very lucky that we both come from pretty big families. Mm -hmm. So we basically just asked everyone, yep. how much do you want yep. to give? How much <laughs> yep. can you give? And yep. then it became, we have a partnership. It's about 30 people mm -hmm. of investors, which mm -hmm. is quite large for a restaurant for people who don't know that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's about everybody we know. Yeah. 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 It takes a village. Yeah. yeah. Was the team at Alimento supportive of this move? Yes. I mean, by that point, we had left Alimento. I left very quickly. Yeah, after we left I got, before. After I got pregnant, we were like, we have a whole bunch of life things that we need to figure yeah, out. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to yeah. be your A team. So it was kind of just life took its course. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you stay, stay in contact with them or anything? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we see yeah. them like, a lot, actually. We didn't for a long time, but then yeah. um, they actually moved 
uh, Zach and his wife, and they have two kids now. They moved like three blocks away from where we live now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, surprisingly, the school that the kids go to, one of the parents also lives in that same neighborhood. It's called Lafayette Square. I don't know if you're familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have like a block party and a holiday party and like all these parties. And like we are now the people who do the catering cater <laughs> at those parties. And he'll roll up and chit chat with us for a little while and then be on his way because he's got two little girls scampering off into the distance. Yeah. Well, I just find it like so important because like everyone, everyone kind of has like a similar story. And sometimes there's people that aren't supportive, Mm -hmm. you know, like when you go off and I think that's the dream of like real restaurant people that are like, this is a career for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, And making that that big jump into, all right, it's time for me to go swim. Yeah. S- swim by myself. And it usually goes one of two ways. And yeah, well, you know. Zach was really old school. He kind of thought like if you commit to a manager job at a restaurant, you give it two years or whatever it was. Yeah. And six months after Alimento opened, we knew it wasn't the place for us. It yeah. just not that we couldn't do the work, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Regardless of her getting pregnant, it was just kind of like. There was no pizza. Yeah. I, mean, I was upset. Was I was obsessed with pizza. And yeah. Like, and like he. He was like, you're going to love it here. It's going to be great. It's small. It's different from what we've been doing. It's, and we, we used to work at Soto. Yeah. Also, and and Soto closed else. down. Yeah. Um, and he was like, don't worry that it doesn't have pizza. And I was like, okay, it's great. Fine. And then I just kind of like lost it. And I was like, yeah. I need, it's like, it's like, I need to have it. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I don't necessarily eat a ton of pizza, but like the making of it, the like physicality of it, the, whatever it is, it's like an alive thing dealing with it. It's like a child that doesn't get mad at you. You know what I mean? Well, Sometimes it gets mad it at you in its own way, but like it's controllable. Yeah. And which a child is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Matt, I think followed me around one morning and we were just messing around with camera stuff. And he, yeah. he I, did you say it was like very sacramental? Yeah. Like yeah. It, because you know, like you're, you're mixing everything and then yeah. you're getting on your hands and knees to yeah. like clean everything. And it's just like the whole process is just like, yeah, I mean, and, and we use sourdough for everything nice. too. So yeah. it's like another layer of you're being pain. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh my God. That first year when we were closed on Tuesdays, Daniel, we'd be home. We'd be our only night at home and we'd put the kids to bed and Daniel would leave to come back to Ronan to feed the Biga. We call it Biga and go home and come back home. And I was like, can't we figure something out where you don't have to leave on our one night together to go feed this thing? But it was like too important to not mess up at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you figured out a different yeah. feeding yes. schedule? Yes. Yeah. And di- it can be refrigerated, okay. which is amazing. It actually functions a little bit more controllably when it's cold. Yeah. We do everything cold. So like, I wanted like a really high hydration. I love bread. So like a lot of this stems from like just normal, like sourdough bread. And like, obviously the internet loves how high is your hydration? They Are do. you at 175% yet? Or Are you at 3000%? <laughs> Look at that open crumb. So, <laughs> Everyone says the same shit, but has no idea what they're talking about. Yes. Right. Or how to get there. Yeah. So, so I wanted it. I, I knew that it couldn't be really like, you know, in that 85, 90% range of the, like a really wet sourdough can be but like it's close to 70 and i use a good amount of high gluten flour and we, if we just we do everything cold like the water starts refrigerated cold the flour is refrigerated cold salt everything that goes in is refrigerated and it lets you have like this workable dough that's just beautiful later like like it was a very difficult horrifying thing to do a mm-hmm. sticky mess and it took three hours to get it off my hands and but it's not like that. It's actually easier. It's like it, it reads like a 58 to 60 percent hydration dough because everything's so cold because everything's yeah. cold. And then when it gets like to baking time, I love how acts. you look at the mixer while you're talking yeah, no, about he, it. As if it's too, there. He's like, <laughs> like, I got talking to it. I'm talking well, to the sourdough starter. I mean, that's a fork mixer. It's a, for, it's a diving arm. Yeah, mixer. diving arms. Yeah. Yeah. Those are so, those are dope. That's yeah. the, you don't see those every day one. either. It's actually the most expensive thing in this restaurant. Uh, People always I, I come in and like that. look at the oven and I'm like, no, no, no. no, no look, it's, it's admire this. And, and the reason we got that, I mean, I would have gotten a spiral mixer or a fork mixer, but it was, but it, the profile of it is like, it's very long. Mm-hmm. It's like the motors in the back and the thing spins off the front and the bolt, like it would have space was would the have issue. been like two feet further off the wall. Yeah. And this thing just goes high. Yeah. 
the only downside is the bowl doesn't come out. So you have to get in there to clean it. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but I don't, a lot do, of I don't do it anymore. Yeah. So it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> great. That's exactly right. Not my problem. Yeah. So you didn't always envision having that mixer. I mean, I did, but I didn't know if the budget was going to like allow okay. for it. Um, do you, how many times are you feeding this, uh, the starter? Is it the Biga? Yeah. I mean, every time, more than we, once a every day? time we make dough. So I would say like, it's probably like four or five times a week depending okay. on the week. And then when you pull, do you have to, do you bake straight from, um, fr straight from the fridge or do you pull the dough We do. Um, yeah. I mean, we pull one box at a time. So like the okay. last one will be maybe not cold, but it's pretty cold when okay. we bake it. When you first put this menu together, I'm sure it's obviously changed throughout the years. Yeah. Uh, was there a process or was this conversations that like y'all used to have together? Like, oh, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like that. And then you know, how much did you have to refine actually after opening up like that original vision of the menu? We had a vision of like, Caitlin was like, okay, you're in control of the menu. I'm in control of this. And I wish that we had been a little bit more collaborative on like everything from the beginning yeah. because there are things I don't know about. Like, I don't know. I don't to this day know like how to order the wine. I don't know <laughs> how to do inventory for that. Like I could guess, but like you're a hired cook. It's <laughs> not. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you're going to do the menu. You're going to stay in your lane. Yeah. I'm going to stay in my lane. And I wish there was a little bit more like outreach, even just to, to people and anyone in, in collaboration, because owning a business is different from being a cook at someone's business. You know what I mean? Like you want to be creative. You want to do all these crazy things. You think you need to impress everyone with avant-garde nonsense and you, you don't. And especially in a place like this, it's, You'd also quite recently been a cook and you remembered the reason you stayed at a job at a job was when new yeah. dishes were coming on and you were constantly exactly. learning new things. So you thought that was important to keep a good kitchen staff and not that it's not, but it doesn't have to be the entire menu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we did too much turnover. And again, I was drowning in my yeah. front of house staffing and paperwork and bills and whatever I was doing. But if we had just sat down and made conscious decisions versus mm -hmm going off emotions of what we thought we needed to do, I think we yeah. would have made better choices. Yeah. And you, know, you, you say, oh, sardines are, there's a sardine special from the fish guy. Like I I'm going to get sardines. And I have I'm to like, run them tonight. Yeah. So we're eating sardines for family meal. Like yeah. nobody's yeah. ordering that. Yeah. Okay. Now we're serving, you know, meatballs and pizza and it's great. That's what people want. So that's what we give them. Yeah. Also, if you get a dish that gets written up one week, you got to plan to keep that dish around for a while. Of course. Yeah. Of course. You know, we, we would have people come in being like, I read this article and I want to try this. And we're like, oh, that's gone. You know, people don't like hearing that. <laughs> no, yeah. no, so no, no. I, we they probably lost. They their phone with yeah. their Yelp and they say, this one. I want this. Uh -huh. yeah. It's okay. All of a sudden they can read. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, COVID, I think, was when we really dialed it in because. So Daniel and I were both here every night until COVID. And then we didn't have childcare anymore. So we had to alternate. One person would be here. One person would be at home. And we had very limited hours. Even with those limited hours, one of us would be here from noon until eight. Um, but it also was the first time we were ever home at 830, having dinner together at a mm -hmm. semi-normal hour. Yeah. And we started to really be able to talk about things and put the pieces together. Um, we also had a much leaner staff, I think. So we weren't in our yeah. heads with all these voices of what everybody thought the restaurant would should be. We really had to make decisions. And I think weirdly Instagram gave us this dialed in connection to our customers during COVID. Whereas before it was like, people would just leave and write their Yelp review and whatever mm -hmm. it was, but people showed that they cared about the restaurant community during COVID. Yeah. And their feedback was a little bit more constructive and genuine and helpful. Um, so at COVID we really pivoted to more, a what could get into a takeout bag and, yeah, and yeah, keep and still be thing. delicious, uh -huh. which was the majority of our menu had to go. Um, but we did Caesar salad and meatballs, which were things that Daniel originally was like, that's too basic for this restaurant. Uh -huh. Turns out it's okay to have Caesar salad and meatballs at a high end restaurant. Yes. Because it expands our customer base. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has to order them, but the people that are completely uncomfortable with the avant garde stuff yeah. have a safe space. Yes. I mean, yeah. You have the, you have the 30% of the menu. That's like, anybody's going to be comfortable getting that. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe they branch out or maybe they say, this is great. And next time they come, they order something different uh -huh. or, or a little bit different. Yeah. Or whatever. But, but if they don't know what Nduya is and don't want to <laughs> pronounce it wrong, they don't have to order it. Yeah. yeah. They we did can have say a lot meatballs. Of, uh -huh. Good. <laughs> we, did, we did have a lot of like Italian words and like puns and like 
jabs and like jokes that had to be explained. Yeah. People are like, what is, what is this thing? And then, and the server would be like, well, it's here. I'm going to talk yeah. to you for 15 minutes yeah. about this and explain chef's you know. inside joke with his friends and you're don't know who that person is. So you don't care. <laughs> Um, you lost me. One star, I'll prove you. Exactly. So that was fun for a minute, though. Yeah. I mean, the the menu still has some play on words in it. Yeah. They, yeah. There's still some words that people are going to stumble over. Mm -hmm. So yeah. with the the calzone. Yeah. Is that that's obvious an uh, an ode to Philippe's. Right. Right. Where did that idea come from? And was there any hesitation putting that on the menu? Because it kind of it doesn't. This is a good story. I it like doesn't one, actually sure. like I, you read that yeah. on your menu and it's kind of like, whoa. Yeah. yeah, you can tell it's, it's a not, little. It's it not came Italian. out of left field. Yes. It's not. It's, it's very. You know, it's a tangential type to, of. To me, way it, it was like a, this is the most like this is the coolest like LA thing at yeah. this point in like my cooking and developing menus and stuff like that. Even even the opening menu for this restaurant was like ninety percent cerebral. It was just like I wrote a bunch of stuff that I thought would be nice together, and then we just cooked it once or twice, and it was like good, and it was fine, and and you know, maybe little tweaks to make it like perfect. But, but this, I have this like running list in my, in my phone. It's a note that has like a thousand items in it that are just like words or things or ideas or whatever. And when I need to put something new on the menu or we need to do a special menu for something or whatever, I go in there and I just like look at stuff. And that was one of the things It just said French dip calzone. And I was like, that actually could be really good. And then the family is obsessed with Philippe. French dip. We call it they Philippi's. call it Philippi's. It's really embarrassing, but I've done it since I was a child, and so I can't undo it. When we, you know, tested it and did all the stuff for it and 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 whatever, it was I had never been there. I'd never eaten at Philippe's. I had never gone. I didn't know where it was. I wouldn't if you, you said you, you can go there, drive to Philippe's without an iPhone, I'd be like, I have no idea if it's even in LA. Like yeah. nothing. Um and we put it on the menu and we like I think Farley Elliott was here at the mm -hmm. bar and I was just like, let me make you something. And I made it for him. And then the guy, uh, Avner, the guy who owns Cento in uh, West Adams, mm -hmm. he was at the bar and the same thing. And it was just like, everyone was like, fuck you for thinking about this. Like, how did you think of this thing? Like, why aren't you putting prosciutto and arugula in a calzone like everybody else or red sauce and pepperoni? Like, how did, how did this happen? And I was like, I don't know. It sounded cool. So. But it, it was really fun because I remember this. It went in the <laughs> oven. It came out. We all tasted it. And it was it was perfect. Take one. It was just like, <laughs> fuck you, man. It like, made, it made sense. So good. It made sense in my head to put those things together. And then our sous chef at the time was like, this is a freshly baked sandwich. It was like you're baking a sandwich a la minute, which, which is yeah. like maybe one of the most, you know, like that's how elevated fine dining restaurants do things. Everything is a la minute. So like to think about baking bread and making a sandwich a la minute makes no sense. Like except with pizza. Yeah. So hence yeah. the French dip calzone. There's like absolutely no rules when it comes to pizza, exactly. but it's like the, the, this idea too is like you have a thousand and mm -hmm. they, they, and maybe one of them work, yeah. work yeah. what you're talking about. Well, it's just time and place. It's like, will it fit here? Will it fit there? Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, it's really funny though. Cause it's, visually the most unappealing thing on our menu oh, once yeah. you slice right. into it. There's no so color, like, how it's do brown, we, it's like. How do we pitch this to people? The soup and, is brown, the yeah. thing, the meat yeah, is Jew. brown, everything yeah. is like just. Yeah. Food and Wine got a picture of it and posted it on Facebook and it, it was actually so, it was, first of all, it was so exciting for me. Food and Wine has posted <laughs> something from my restaurant, yeah. but the comments were, were so many first of all and they were completely split between i need to eat this and this looks absolutely disgusting yeah. and i was like so should i be complimented still but you know i think i am people yeah. are responding to this yeah i mean any press is good press any yeah, exactly. comments good comment yeah. i mean it's feeding engagement the let's go yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no and now and now we're you know calzones are like this vehicle now for us to it's almost like a more creative vehicle than a pizza is because it's sealed there's like the moment you open it, there's the cheese pulls. Mm -hmm. like, it's like you're forced to do it. It's not just the pizza gets to the table and it sits there and you know, maybe they don't eat it right away and then they eat it and it's fine, whatever. Yeah. But like this calzone, like you can't help, but, and then we serve it with like a knife sticking out of the top. You can't help, but like go for it immediately. Yeah. It's also somebody that like something that like not a lot of people are doing really on a high level. I mean, it's kind of like an afterthought thing totally. on somebody's yeah. menu and it's like usually undercooked or too much sauce and it's yeah. soggy as shit. And yeah. it's like, 
Uh, but to use it as a vehicle for that kind of creativity is pretty rad. I mean, yeah. you look at it right away on the menu and it's like, yeah. hmm, <laughs> I think I have to have that. I just yeah. need to know. Yeah. It's either, yeah. I, I, it's, I, once I again, it's either know. that or it's, I, I think I'm, I'm going to have a margarita. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. But we have a breakfast burrito calzone on the brunch menu now too. So it's just kind of like this fun. It's kind of like, what's Ronan going to do in their calzone? What can we put in a calzone now? <laughs> do, do those sell well? It doesn't sell as well as I thought it would. Yeah. yeah. I think the other pizzas are like so dialed in yeah. that it's almost like it's big also. And people at brunch are like very particular more often than not. They're not like sharing a lot of things. It's just like, I'm getting this or I'm getting that. Yeah. People want to order their own burrito meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. comes to the table and they're like, I, that's too big. Yeah. It's like, it's probably delicious. So, I'd be so that good. guy. Who, <laughs> I'll be like, there's a breakfast. Anything Next, close to any, anything that says breakfast burrito, yeah, I'm here for it. Next time you're hungover <laughs> on a Sunday, you need to I'm come here. It's here. so good. So it's been kind of a scary time around LA in the restaurant space. Um, did you feel the effects of like the strike here or like just how gnarly last year was? The strike was the first time we kind of got scared again after COVID. Because um, business for us always dips in the summer. So we're really prepared to have a slow summer. But it dipped, um, it dipped and then it didn't come back the same way it usually does. So mm -hmm. started around May. We were like, okay, summer's a little early this year, but that's fine. June, July, August, nobody's worried. Then we're like I'm telling my staff, I'm like, guys, September, mm -hmm. don't worry, September. As soon as school starts, it picks up again. And it was just it stayed exactly yeah. flat where it was. But we also uh, lost a lot of our to-go business during the strike. I mm. think... Um, you know, writers and even actors on sets, they have budgets for takeout and that was gone, mm -hmm. which um, is just a theory of mine. I have no record yeah. of that or proof, but our takeout really dipped, which is something we had become reliant on since COVID. Yeah. Um, it had become part of our business model. So that was rough. Um, I will say the night the actor strike ended, it felt like a party in here. It was like immediate. Was There's fun. every, every table ordered dessert, which is weird. <laughs> Kind of weird, um, but everybody was drinking, everybody was having a good time. And I was like, oh, we're back. And we haven't come back. We It's definitely gotten better, yeah. but we're in this really weird phase where we have no idea what we're gonna get on any given yeah. night. We've had a record setting Saturday, followed by a record low Friday the next week. Um, weeknights are all over the place. And you know that's, that's stressful in terms of staffing because you just have no idea what you're gonna get and how to prepare. In those moments of stress, like for you, what what do you do in those lulls of business? Like uh, personally, I freak out a little bit. I start yeah. like I start pacing in my house. I'm talking mm -hmm. to my wife, and she's always she's always like, just look at the month sales. Yeah, the yeah. month sales yeah. are going to tell the better story. Exactly. Yeah, you know, same kind of thing. The inconsistency of sales has yeah. been the scariest yeah. thing. Yeah, and and it hasn't come back since about May. Yeah. Um, but how do you hand like do you start thinking like we got to do this, we got to do this or do we do we need to relax or? Yeah. yeah, we definitely try to use it as a time to get creative and think about what events will draw people in. So um, it's taken a long time, but I for we also have like a lot of friends in the industry. So we'll reach out and be like, is this happening yeah. to you? Yeah. And as long as everyone else is saying yes, yes. I'm not scared yeah. uh -huh. because there was a time when it happened to me when it wasn't happening to everyone else. Um, that was our, after our six month run yeah. of hype when we just nosedived, uh, six months after opening. And that was us doing something wrong. If it's not in my control, I'm not going to freak out about it. I can't yeah. change it. I can't yeah. change the, the whole, the economy of Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, but what we will do is we're like, okay, we really need to buckle down and creative and find new ways to bring in business. So whether it's, you know, doing more catering and really pushing catering and finding an avenue of revenue through that or doing collabs. Collabs. Collabs are a huge thing for us. Um, if we can do like one a quarter, it really gives us a boost in PR and sales. Um, but other than that, it's out of my control. Yeah. And I'm like your wife. You just look at the month. Do not yeah. look at the day. <laughs> yeah. People will tell me all oh, last night. I'm like, don't tell me. I don't need to know. Yeah. No, she's <laughs> like, look, I mean, she's the one who's like looking at the, like the toast interface. Like yeah. Yeah. the time. Yeah. She's like, oh, it's looking like a dark dark saturday i'm like why are you t i don't want to know yeah, like, yeah just don't tell me yeah out of yeah. sight out of mind yeah half the time if it wasn't for her i wouldn't even know we were yeah. doing well i don't know <laughs> the thing that scares me is is the number of restaurants that are closing yes yeah. shockingly like out of nowhere yes they're like whoa we're closed and i'm like what are you, what are you talking about you've been open for 12 years like village idiot just closed 
I know I've been open for 15 I, years. I saw that. I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a that's a lot of good. But then, times like, if you think youth. about it, it's like you know, five year lease, two five year extensions. They have a landlord. It's, there's all kinds of factors that are that are also going into it. But but it's still scary when a when a business that seems successful from the outside, yeah, just closes. Yeah, yeah. Like Spartina up the street just closed like two weeks ago too. Like, I, I mean, it, it, there's something every week. Yeah, yeah. They're, it's scary. It, that's what's scary to me. And I wonder if a little bit of that is just people being like, I'm fucking done with this. Yeah. Yeah. People you are know, tired. Like I am. It, yeah. and the, the, it is, it is stressful. exhausting and it's, it is stressful because it's like, it's basically a boxing match. Yeah. yeah. You know, the whole thing is like, you never stop getting punches thrown at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm sure like since you've opened up, it's been oh, there's struggle a new, after there's a, struggle. There's a new thing every day. Like how important do you think it is to be part of the hype machine to drive business to your restaurant? In the beginning, it was felt it a lot more i think i think i think it's important um unfortunately yeah but i do think it's important we so when we opened we didn't pay for pr i was very much against it i was like i'm not going to be the pay to play i want an authentic experience and communication with our customers and after six months um it was tax weekend coachella all that in april yeah and i was like oh, okay everybody's in coachella everybody paid taxes this is a weird week it never turned around. Um, and I was six months pregnant with our second child. And I remember going to my OBGYN and I was like, I am really stressed. Is this going to affect my unborn baby? And she was like, I mean, it's not great that you're stressed, but I wouldn't worry. Like, you know, we've done all the, everything's yeah. fine. I was yeah. like, no, I am really stressed. <laughs> um, but that was, we literally turned around, hired a PR company, um, had a really nice experience working with them. They were wonderful. But until we did that, we would have gone out of business. I firmly believe that we were not going to come back yeah. without somebody getting our name in the press. Yeah. Do you want to share that PR agency's name? Yeah, it's Carving Block. Okay. Yeah. Was uh, it a was it a Bill Addison review? We actually got the Bill Addison review that April during the Coachella okay. when I was like, oh, oh my God. It didn't do what you, it didn't do oh, anything. It was a great it, it was a guess. great review yeah. too. Like go back and read the review. I'll tell it everyone just, to read the review. It, it was great. It didn't do what it, like when Jonathan Gold was writing reviews and supporting restaurants, like everybody cared and mm-hmm. everybody was watching and waiting for the next Jonathan Gold story mm-hmm. to be told. Yes. Yeah. And not that, you know, Bill is not articulate or, or anything like that, but he, he is he, anonymous and he kind of like pivoted all of this, you know, very forward moving, positive restaurant culture that Jonathan Gold had um, created yeah, and kind of, I think, took a couple steps back and made it seem like, like now we're back in the anonymous guy. He's going to give us a grade. It's going to be like a point score out of a hundred. And like, well, he didn't have the city behind him. I mean, the entire city loved yeah. Jonathan Gold. Yeah, no, he was, was like LA. Yeah, I think we were crazy. Bill Addison's fourth review, maybe. Yeah. Um, so people weren't super jazzed about it yet. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. But um, yeah, it didn't do anything. I guess that'd be a little terrifying though, because like if you're already feeling like you're struggling and then yeah. you feel like this is going to be a big review and then yeah. it just kind of nothing does happened. nothing. Yeah. It's time to do something else. I was like, if yeah. getting into the LA Times doesn't do it, what's going to do it? Come yeah. on now, guys. So what was like the main turnaround in, in what? Are people coming up to you and asking you, do you have vegan options? Do you have vegan meats? Well, guess what? A lot of them are not that good. But there is one that reigns superior, and that is Beehive. Everything that they make at Beehive is levels ahead of what you can get in a grocery store. Their pepperoni, their crumbled sausage, their cheeses. There is no contest. And the owner is one of the coolest people I have ever met. They make incredible products that go on your pizza, and it is dope plant food. That's what they call it, and that's what it is. Beehive, the best and we are so happy to have them as a sponsor look no further if you are being hounded by your customers about oh we want the vegan meats we want the vegan cheeses it's beehive baby straight out of nashville good people great product so what was like the main turnaround in in what helped build hype uh, a collab that we did called Perm Boys, actually. Okay. Um, that, I saw that on the internet. That went viral. It yeah, was it huge. Was so wild. we did a chicken parm pop-up one Sunday a month 
Um, and it was like Sunday supper vibes, kind of Dantana esque. Mm -hmm. Um, it's two of our friends were from new England and they brought the idea to us and they were like, we want to host a chicken parm night and have mm -hmm. all our friends come. And it was not meant to get this big. It was meant to just be like, have their friends into our restaurant. And I mean, we honestly how it started, Chris was at the bar and he, he shot, he like, pitched the idea to me not to be here. He was like, do you think somebody would say yes to this? Yeah. And I was like, yes, it's me. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to say yes to it. Yes. But the only reason we said yes to it was because we were so slow. We had nothing to lose. Uh -huh. We were like, well, no one's here anyway. We might as well serve them some chicken parm. Yeah. yeah. It was like a Sunday night industry party. It was the music was loud. Yeah. The room was sweaty. People drank like fish. Um, it was First one wild. was funny too, because we didn't fully commit to it. We weren't like, okay, the whole night's yours. Like, we did a normal service until like six or seven or something. Until it was five to eight. We did Ronin because we usually do an early yeah. Sunday. So we're like, I don't want to piss off any of our Sunday regulars. Yeah. And um, then we, and we then switched. We switched services into this other service of Parm Boys. And oh, the first hour, Daniel was, was so mad like, at me. He was like looking at me like, why did you do this to me? <laughs> first of all, second of all, transitions are the always people oh, flooded horrible. in here. And we, we had to turn the music up to like almost maximum to like to like hear to like stop them from it sounded like a football game in here it was yeah. crazy um and then the next one was and then it just kept going up and up and up and up and up and then we did but also like thank you carving block we gave them something to promote yeah. they were like you're not a new restaurant what can we yeah you know they were their spin on us was oh you're the modern mom and pop um so they were pitching you know daniel and i as a couple running a business and that's interesting and it yeah. has its place in time yeah but also having parm boys they were like thank you we can run with this yeah, yeah. Um, and they did. And they brought a lot of people in for yeah. Parm Boys. And it, it, and it got publicized quite a bit. Yeah. 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 Parm Boys is still, there was one, I don't know if it was the one before the Sunday of the shutdown or the. It was the Sunday of the shutdown. No, yeah. the, the, oh. but the record setting one. Oh, it was the month before the that. The month before that. February still, 2020. I think we did like 260 covers in here. Which in is night, what we've never done. Sunday night. Yeah, that's banging. Yeah. It's more than we do on Valentine's it's Day. Insane. It's more than we do. Like, like 180, years, 190 is like max. And this was like full from the very beginning until 11 p.m. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then the next week and then the next month was. March the 15th. Sunday of the shutdown. Yeah. March yeah. 15th. <laughs> Darkness. It like yeah. happened during service, too, because like we were busy in the beginning. And then like all of a sudden people were like leaving. Yeah. And like reservations were canceling and nobody was showing up. And then it like. 8.30, everyone was, the place was empty. We yeah. were just like, what happened? Yeah. Did you, did you use them after the pandemic was over? Carving the, block? Yeah. So what they did, they very graciously, they were like, okay, you're not making money. We will still field any incoming PR requests Recorded. and handle them. You let us know when you're ready to pay us and get back on track. Um, and so once we started making money again or had all our loans, maybe about mm -hmm. a year yeah. in, I was like, oh, you've been doing a year of work for them. And for us, if we're, I need to start paying you if we're going to do it. And we did it for about six months, but we kind of realized we didn't need that mm -hmm. anymore. And I wasn't able to give to them anything for them to run with. Mm -hmm. Like they needed engagement from me. And I was like, I'm way too busy keeping this restaurant afloat to give you a, like a cute story. I don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we amicably, very amicably parted ways. I still recommend them to any, any new restaurant. Yeah. They're great. Your branding. Like your, I love your website. I love yep. how simple it is. I love like I, I, I was just gonna ask you like what the sign was, but now <laughs> I'm like I looked at the the tote bag and I was like it's a pizza. Yep. It's so many things. <laughs> I thought, so I, things. but I was like, what is this cool like so, Harry Potter symbol? But if you look at it, so this symbol actually came. I was in the backyard with our oldest daughter, and we drew the let. She drew the letters of her name in a stack. And. I kind of like drew it again and then I drew it again and I kind of like blew out the letters a little bit. But if you look at it, it does look like a pizza in a box with two slices. Mm -hmm. But if you use the like figure eight that's in the middle and the line, you can do uh, R O N A N. Mm -hmm. It also spells her name L O G A N. And then there were a couple other funny, I don't know exactly. Those, what, those were the ones we knew at the those time. Those were the ones we knew at the time. But, yeah. But there's other like bars in there. Like it's, it's a lot. It's actually a lot of letters can be made from that. No, it's symbol. A, it's weird. 
That is um, pretty awesome. But it's yeah. it like all kind of fell together in that way. Yeah. Our daughter's name is Logan, but if she'd been a boy, her name would have been Ronan, which is where the name of the restaurant okay. came from. So the branding people were trying to give us like pit fire, fire symbols. And we were like, no, mm, this isn't, place. this isn't the vibe. So, so, yeah. pizza. so we, we came up with that. It wasn't yeah. even from a, a design company or anything. Uh, yeah. I, I, well, I love branding and yeah. I also, I love that that's, that's the story behind that. It, it's like so much more than, than what I thought it was, yeah. which is also very cool. <laughs> with the, with the restaurant itself, did, when you went to design it, you, did you obviously hired some design, we the did. design team, but is this like what, when it was all said and done, were you like, this is exactly what we had in our, in our head, like our head, because I think feeling wise, yeah, I think yeah. they were able to execute the feeling. I never would have come up with this or yeah. I didn't, I didn't say I want tiles on the wall and I want round lights and I want this light fixture. Yeah. They came up with all that, but definitely the feeling it's like modern industrial, but also rustic and comfortable, mm -hmm. which is a lot of things to tell someone to execute in one thing. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> definitely like the kind of emails they probably get though. I want modern, mm -hmm. yeah. rustic, yeah. New York, yeah. California. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they did it in a way I really wanted it to not feel cookie cutter like every other restaurant in LA at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of like light wood, a pink accent wall, a yeah. palm tree wallpaper. I was like, he tried to pitch me a pink bathroom and I was like, absolutely yeah. not. We're but not doing we had, it. But then we had to also like take into account, like maximizing the seating and, and, you know, making sure we had the sound baffling materials and the, you know, painting and the color scheme and the whatever. So he, he was able to tie everything together pretty well, I think. And then yeah. Yeah, we also light had fixtures. Oh, these are all like custom made light fixtures. For yeah, the lighting design. That's like what I that's what I noticed like right away when you turned them on. Yeah. Our opening bartender. Also, his dad was a woodworker. So we had like a couple people in our back pocket where like he did all the wood outside. And um, it was just, we had the right people nearby, which yeah. was great. If there is one thing that you could change, Oof. one thing you could change uh, if you could go back before you opened or during the design process or build out or whatever, before you started, what would it be? It's the little things, I don't know, like spend, spend more on cooking equipment because shit bites you right in the ass if you are cheap. Yeah. Not having the right tools. Um, no, like pay a little bit more for a nicer stove. Yeah. It, you know, because you're going to have to buy a new stove in two years. Yeah put the money in now you won't have to buy a new stove in two years yeah i think i overspent in the bathrooms i yeah. wanted like a lot of the materials yeah could have been like like these tiles were pretty expensive and the, the lights are nice but like i think we could have done something else and not you know we didn't have to custom the design so lighting high. maybe yeah um yeah well like it's a weird process because you don't get the price tag until yeah. everything's done yeah. you know like you yeah. get the design you're like oh this looks sick this yeah. is gonna be tight and then yeah. you get the bid and you're like why didn't anyone tell me that these yeah. tiles were going to be uh, $27,000? <laughs> yeah. And I think if I'd known, I was like, I would get it and I'd be like, okay, well, we're going to invest. That's going to be our statement piece is the lighting mm -hmm. and the tile. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. but if I knew how many other costs were going to come up later, I wouldn't have even had investment yeah. spots, you yeah. know? I mean, there's ways to make things look nice where like, I'm sure there were, was another tile that was nice, but you know, 20% of the cost. Yeah. 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 Or, but you obviously don't think about that. Really. No. Yeah. It's a pretty saturated block here. Melrose has always yes. been mm -hmm. a hot block. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not too far from, is Fairfax just right there? Yep, yeah. we're in between Fairfax and, got, and La Brea. And you got, and I know that you, you've probably been compared to them, but you got Moza just right down there. Yes. When you considered this spot, did you think about like all these things or worry about like, you know, the other restaurants that were in the neighborhood? I think we saw it as an asset more because we knew that, there was proof that business was here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and but it's not that similar. Like we also signed. Yeah, we were like our our food is very different from Mozza. So we weren't worried about that necessarily. But I will say we signed the lease two years before we opened. Yeah. And in that time, I think three or four pizza shops opened on Melrose. It's just like so, happening every year. Yeah, yeah. By the time we opened, the L.A. Eater headline was uh yeah. Ronan opens in Pizza Alley. Pizza Alley. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> when did it become Pizza Alley? That was not. Dude, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we started Pizza Alley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the Moza thing, I just thought we were so different. And they and they proved that people would come to this location. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't worried about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
Moza was what, 10 years old at that time? Yeah, there was, so it, was it wasn't like, Moza. I don't think I would open two years after Moza, but 10 years. So it's like, all right, we're ready for something new. Yeah, just having this conversation that pizza is, you can have almost as many pizzerias as you can Starbucks because yeah. one, everyone loves pizza and two, everybody, if it's close to your house and it can be, it, then it's your shop. Yeah. It's your neighborhood shop. Yeah. Well, there's also so many price points on pizza and styles. It's like, you know, you got the slice joints, you got the sit down places, you got the full pie places, you yeah. got places like Pizzeria Moza that are like a little bit upscale attached to Osteria Moza. So it's. You can get like a slice last night for dinner, yeah. then come to Ronin tonight for dinner, then go get a square it's tomorrow like for dinner and not feel redundant. There, yeah. there yeah. was Sal's Calzones over here. There was this like molecular gastronomy place that was open for a minute, but they were serving pizza. And yeah. there was that pizza place around the corner on La Brea with a rotating pizza oven. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, wiggle room in space. I yeah. Think. It's not just, you know, I want pizza. I'm getting Ronin. It's like, what kind of pizza do I want a slice? Do I want a big slice? Do I want a little slice? Do I want extra pepperoni today? Do I, do want, I want soft? Onion? Do I want crunchy? Do I want? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. It's, it could be a million things. So you can go to different places for different exactly. things. All in the neighborhood. We got, we got Prime, Moza, Ronin. Is John and Vinny's close to here too? Yep. Yeah. Close-ish, yeah. All right. So this is a quote I grabbed, I think, uh, from you, Kaylin. Uh, I hope that people know we, we really do care. We didn't do this to make our lives easier. We did it so we could spend more time as a family. It's not easy. And we are not making buckets of money. It's not setting us up to buy a house. Maybe we should have bought a house instead of opening <laughs> up this restaurant. Yep. I loved everything about this because I feel like these are like sediments that like every restaurant owner that's in it like feels. Yeah. You know, um, I think this kind of honesty is uh, what a lot of people sometimes miss. Any, any restaurant, big or small, does not come with truckfuls of money. No. You know? yeah. um, it comes with heartache, stress, and struggle. <laughs> And I just want to know how how much easier has it gotten since you opened your doors or if it hasn't gotten easier, are you just dealing with the struggles better? I think it's gotten infinitely easier. Um, but I think a lot of that. Some of that is things that are in our control. Some of it is things that are out of our control. When we opened, we really depleted our cash funds and we had no choice but to be here every night and be the managerial team. And that was hard um, because, I mean, there was no choice. It was, it was a money decision. It wasn't, mm -hmm. I want to be here and I love this restaurant so much. It was, I have to pay these bills. I can't afford to pay someone else to cover my shift. Yeah. Um, that has changed, thank God. And, um, you know, the restaurant still isn't cash flush, but it's, it's, it's sustaining itself in a way that we can choose to be home or choose to be here and make sure that we're having the balance wherever it's needed. Um, we also have are really lucky in our team. Um, the first GM I ever hired who wasn't me, which I never really thought I would be able to do is actually a really close family friend. So um, our nanny who we hired when we opened her boyfriend at the time was a bartender. Um, and she was always like, Oh, Jeremy hates his job. Jeremy hates his job. He worked mm -hmm. at Beverly Hills somewhere. And I was like, oh, that's a little too, I don't want to like have him work at Ronin, yeah, have problems, yeah. and have problems with you. But like after a few years, it evolved and he ended up getting a few shifts here. Um, then they got married, they have a baby now, all these things. Um, but he just kind of like became part of Ronin through being here. And then we just have this person who we love so much, trust so much. We've known almost seven years now. So when we're not here, we really know the restaurants in good hands. It's yeah. not just somebody we hired through a Craigslist ad. It's somebody who we love and care about. Yeah. Um, and that's not something that every restaurant owner gets. hundred percent. So that's, that's really nice. And that, that's my side. You have your own team too, who are also yeah. wonderful. Not no, to I, mean, I mean, dialing in the menu really made what the kitchen is now possible. Like before when it was my you know, brain spilling onto dishes that was, you know, no, nobody else could really do that here. We hired a couple chef de cuisines. They didn't work out. We hired a couple sous chefs. We've gone through not too many managerial people in the kitchen, but the guy we have now is super solid. And he's like very focused on, you know, training people, doing the stuff the right way, doing the stuff how I want it to be done, expressing that to, to the staff instead of being like, this is what I want. It's like, you're not doing this 
the right way, but it's, it doesn't really affect me. It affects Daniel and Caitlin. Like you're, you know, he, he brings it back to us, which is, is like important for the, for the, like the ethos and the, and the being of this place. It's Even when like, we're not here, we're here, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. We're and, here through the people who are here. And we also have that security. I think having so many years into it and knowing how much we put in, in the beginning, yeah. sometimes people are like, isn't it hard to step away? And I'm like, no, I paid my dues. I put so many hours into that place. It's okay that I've set it up to where I don't have to be there all the time anymore. And that speaks volumes to what I did. hundred yeah. percent. If I was and still we, here all the time, there would be a problem. hundred percent. We, we get yeah. a lot of people who are regulars or who are now friends of ours who are friends of ours because they are regulars here. And every time they'll send us a text message or a call or next time we see them at the market or whatever. And they're like, we were at Ronin. We didn't see you. We love that. We miss you. But we're so happy for you that you don't have to be there all the time. Yeah. It's like the next step. Like you open the restaurant, you put in all the work. Stepping back is like just as much an important step as stepping two steps in. Yeah. Also, stepping back is what allowed us to make it sustainable because we step back. So we're here during the day. So we basically like still handle the vision of what the restaurant is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But we're able to go pick our kids up from school mm -hmm. and go home and have dinner with them and get a good night's sleep before they bust we, into our we room have at the 6 a.m. people and the tools and the systems now to allow ourselves to have a more regular life situation. And then we've built a catering business. So basically, we'll take all the catering jobs personally, which people always find really mm -hmm. surprising. They're like, oh, you're here. And I'm like, yep, I'm, it's me. So you get, you're um, making <laughs> pizza in my backyard. It's amazing. You didn't just bring it here and reheat it. Like, you're making this here. And we're like, yeah. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. But that, that <laughs> line of business allows us to financially support not being here at night, every night. Yeah. Well, I think what you just talked about is actually the hardest thing is is stepping back. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then and I think you kind of said that you'd be doing a bad job if you were here all the time. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think that's like such a common misconception because people new to the game, like think you have to be here 14 yeah. hours a day and that you're going to be here for the rest of your life. And yeah. if you leave for a second... You're only going to get 85%, yeah. you know, and I think there's so many issues dealing with a restaurant, but thinking like that, mm -hmm. yeah. you're going to, yeah, you're going to want to, that's what the, the goal should be stepping back mm -hmm. and being able to look at it in a broad, with a broader lens instead of micromanaging everything and controlling everything. Like the goal shouldn't be like, I want to be in control of everything. Yeah. The goal is to hand everything off so that when the problem arises, you're available to handle it. Um, and it creates growth and room yeah. and room, space yeah. for people to to figure things out on their mm -hmm. own without mm -hmm. you know you breathing down their their neck mm -hmm. like yeah. and they should they should have the freedom to make mistakes too yeah and I'm sure you both allow them to make those mistakes without yeah. you know, sometimes taking we have them a really grumbly take, conversation yeah. at home and then we're put not, on the smile and yeah, come yeah, in and exactly. talk about we're it not, but not yelly, I'm not the, the yelly, yelly and angry them. chef anymore like you know yeah. You, yeah. you go through that phase but it's it's not as it's not important i would rather you know tell the person okay you made a mistake this is what don't do this in the future don't do this you know mm -hmm. set yourself up in this way set yourself up in that way but you know it's i've seen people yell at people and people leave i would rather you know cultivate it and move forward in a positive way than, than also people are just gonna hide their mistakes like if they're worried about away, getting yelled at like, and that's worse. That's and you worse. lose your people. You lose, you know, you lose your confidence from the other people around them. Do you think that uh, having children like changed the way that you you wanted to be in the restaurant industry, or like the way that you looked at it, the way you wanted to spend your time? I yes. ask because personally, yeah. like, I, I was that person that's like, I'm going to be there for seven days a week, fourteen yeah. hours a day, and then it was like, what am I, I doing? Yeah. yeah, I think a hundred percent. I mean, I didn't mind when it was my job to be here every night. I loved it actually. Mm -hmm. um, but that was when we had one child and then we had two more and now we have three and I work two nights a week still in the restaurant and nine, nine thirty comes around and I'm like, I'm out. I, I have to go home and go to bed. I pers I just cannot do this anymore. Um, thank God I trust the people who are here and I can leave at that time, but yeah. it's not even more about wanting to be here or not wanting to be here or loving it or not loving it. It's just so much is demanded of your time outside of here. And you can't, you just can't stretch yourself that thin because yeah. you're just going to go home and be a pad parent. And then you're going to feel like shit yeah, about yourself. And, they, and the kids need you. Like yeah. people here are adults. Yeah. Yeah. They need you, but like, they don't need you. Like a kid needs you. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you have to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. uh, 
So you talked about catering. I wanted to talk about that. I don't know what the question is, but you just used you used two Gosney domes for yep. all your catering. Pretty much. And you're doing all your dough production in here. And is it similar to the menu? Do you have a catering menu that you do? We have packages. Okay. So basically people will reach out with very little information. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we want you to cater. And I have a form that I send back to them. And I'm like, this is all the things that we offer. And these are the things I need to know from you. A, your address. B, how mm -hmm. many people. C, when is this catering event? Yeah. Um, you know, basic information. Yeah. Uh, but we have four tiered packages. We do like pizza only. Uh, pizza and salad pizza and a salad and an entree more of like a full service meal or we do like a high-end tasting menu type of thing we've mm -hmm. really only ever done nobody, that for daniel's yeah, uncle nobody has <laughs> ever gotten that people people nobody really even gets the entree thing it's either pizza, pizza or salad and pizza and that's it yeah yeah so i try to use that as an opportunity to show them hey we can do much more than just pizza i know that we're pegged as the pizza space and that's great because yeah. we we ride that wave but um then it becomes a conversation about cost. A lot of people think that catering should be the same cost as getting takeout pizza. Yeah. And I have to walk them through that. No, you're hiring a chef to come to yeah. your house on a Saturday night. We're setting up a restaurant. We're bringing a 200 yes. pound oven. We're cooking for you. That's going to cost a lot more than ordering Domino's. Yeah. Um, so there's <laughs> more of pizza at the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's not, you know, it's not that same cost. So it kind of helps us weed out who really understood that coming into the conversation and who is surprised and can't yeah. afford that. And that's also totally fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you just need to be realistic about what, what you can provide and yeah. what you really need. We also do like, if somebody's like, I want a sausage pizza that's not on the menu, we make yeah. it. You yeah. So from there, we, do whatever. we, we do say, here's our pizza, restaurant menu. You can build off of that. Or if you have any special requests, please don't hesitate to ask. Cause yeah. the, that's the fun part of catering is you really have an opportunity to, create something if they're like we're all dairy free and we need three dairy free pizzas fine let's go yeah. let's do it yeah you're paying us <laughs> whatever you want yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll pull a rabbit out of the hat. Uh, how, how many, many how many catering years? events do you think you do a year i would say on average it's it's two per month is how okay. i kind of look at all it right. but like sometimes it's zero and sometimes it's six yeah and that six month is and really stressful seasons, yeah. and yeah. that two sure. zero month is also really stressful yeah but it comes in waves and when you do catering events, is it mostly the time just you two? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's a, that's a, like, if you're doing like an 85 person yeah. event. Those are the ones where we're sweating a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's surprising though. Like you would, you would think, you know, we always show up with too much food. We're like, okay, it's 85 people. They're going to eat like three quarters of a pizza each. Not the case. People eat like, some people eat a few slices. Some people maybe like one pizza for one person is like, maximum yeah. yeah nobody's ever even come close to that though it's so also it's like, like we always do a buffet service and we have the lucky skill that or opportunity that we have a pizza oven and daniel's cooking right behind me mm -hmm. and we have a conversation piece so obviously we have one or two ovens we can cook one or two pizzas at a time we're never going to put out enough food at one time to serve all those 85 mm -hmm. people yeah but we have a conversation going everyone's interested and Where, people think that? oh what my is, god we have this show there? piece so it makes it less pressure versus if we were catering a wedding and you're doing, you know, that the server comes around the right side. We all drop the plates at the same time. We don't have that yeah. ever. We did do a buffet at a wedding though once. Yeah, that was wonderful. And it was like 120 people and they ate like 50 pizzas. It was like not really that much. Oh my God. We came so prepared. We it was were like crazy. Our first we came wedding. with three ovens. We had all the staff. We had everyone had like, like, uh, Ear, earphones Earbuds. in their ear to communicate go, with everyone. Go, 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 go. I mean, you're not going to fuck up someone's wedding. You're just yeah, not. Yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's interesting because, you know, like, I, 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 we've yeah. done small, small catering yeah. events, but mm -hmm. it's like, it's always like, yeah, one one pizza per person. But it's like, I think that way because yeah. it's like, I'll crush a full pizza. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you give me a give me a 10-inch pizza, I could probably crush yeah. two, yeah. you know? But uh, do you leave a lot of pizza behind when you do those events if they don't eat it? Well, most of the time it's something off our menu, so we can bring back the prep okay, and yeah. use it here. Right. Oh, okay. Now, we leave them a few. You know yeah. What I mean? But well, that's kind of our parting gift is we bring some takeout boxes there, and leave them. There does come a point, though, like where you, you know, it's like, it's like a bell curve. Like most of the people are eating right around this time, and then it very, it's winding down. Meticulously event uh, yeah. peters off, and, and you're like, oh, okay, no one's eating anymore. Got it. Time yeah. to go. Yep. Did you always use Gosney for those? We did. It started at the first uh, Coachella, two Coachellas ago. 2022 was the first one they came back after so. COVID? They, yes. They were just starting to like get people to be 
ambassadors. With the with ambassadors with the rock box. Mm -hmm. So they gave us four rock boxes for the first um, Coachella, and they took those there and they cooked with them there, and then the dome came out mm -hmm. and they dropped one of the domes off for the second weekend, and they took that with them there, and then I don't know exactly. There was just like few conversations, few conversations. Then all of a sudden there were two more domes and they were like, yeah, just take, just here. These are yours now. Do they just throw just social media? Yeah, it's man. crazy. The funniest thing is that actually Coachella was our first catering job. That's a hell People of a catering People are like, what the job, hell man. are you thinking? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. They offered us some money. We did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes it's good to just go into it. Like, yeah, we just went for we it. We got it. Yeah. yeah. Make 1800 pizza bowls of, for, per weekend. You did 1800, uh, 1800 dough balls per holy weekend. Holy shit. Yeah. That's just like a lot of dough prep. We have to close the restaurant for two days. Two and a half for two full days. days of just making dough all yeah. day. And then we park a refrigerated truck out there and roll them in on speed racks. And it's a whole. It's crazy. This will be our third year. I hope we've gotten better at it are this you doing, year. Are you, are you doing private parties? Are at you Coachella? Coachella? No, we're no, just no, no, in no, the VIP booth. We're in the VIP booth. booth. Oh, so you're in VIP. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Damn. <laughs> so they, uh, then th then you're getting a flat rate for that, right? So what happens is we go out and they take a commission. Yeah. And then there's like stipends for some of the things like lodging, um, equipment. Yeah. So do the VIP, when, when they're, we, they still have to like go up and buy your yeah. pizza. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So okay. all of our income is basically from the sales. Yeah. So you do have to invest a, a bit of money going in Ton. to make sure, hope that you're going to get those sales. Yeah. yeah. How much are you selling a pizza for? At Coachella. Ooh, what, I think we sell, there's, we actually do smaller balls okay. than we do here and then sell them for the same price. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. To make up for the commission. Oh, okay. So we're fits, serving less pizza. The pizza fits probably on like an eight, like a 10 inch. Uh, paper plate. Paper plate. Yeah. So it's like four slices on a paper plate instead of like the. It's like actually inch. personal size yeah. versus yeah. ours here can be a little bit more share size. Okay. Yeah. The dough, dough here is like close to 300 grams and that one we do like 190, I think. Okay. Real. So it's like. Yeah. A crush, but also, like, easy. that's what you cook in the in the, the rock box. That's yeah, it's perfect. You can't cook a big pizza in there because the heat source is from the back, yeah, so it just kind of burns the back unless it's smaller. Yeah. But For you, anyone who hasn't been to Coachella, though, I want to go on record that all the food out there is very expensive. No, yeah. well, no, yeah. well, no I, so you're so for the 10 inch because I'm, I'm gonna say how expensive something is, yeah. but for th that piece of that pizza, pizza, you're it's 25 bucks, something 22, like okay. Yeah. Because twenty five with can me. Go, when Pizza Nista did it, it was like ninety five dollars for an eighteen inch pizza. Yes, so crazy. it's like that's that's that, a pretty good deal. Yeah, <laughs> we're actually one of the deals on the block. Yeah, that we're sounds like a yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's and, just crank it out. And you're it's doing like, and you're you're just using two Gosneys for that. Whole no, 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 no. We use four rock boxes there when yeah. you go there. Yeah, and we can do that because the pizzas are smaller, yeah, so yeah. you can cook them in the rock boxes yes. easier. Our normal size pizzas are too big for the rock boxes. Yeah. So when we do catering, we take the domes Got it. in L. A. So you just got you got an arsenal of uh, yeah of Gosney ovens. Our, our, our garage is really nice. unique looking. <laughs> oh, I love it. What has been the hardest part about working together as a married couple? Being able to leave the restaurant here, yeah, is impossible. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of conversations are conversations that shouldn't be had at home about operations mm -hmm. or about handling situations or whatever, and like yeah. we get a little bit heated and then. You know, the, you, the goal is that it doesn't affect, you know, your your night, but sometimes it does. And sometimes, you know, she yeah. gets pissed and sometimes I get pissed. And it's like it's also that meme where there's like parents on a date night and it's like, please don't talk about your kids. Yeah. We'll look at each other. And we're like, hey, don't talk about the kids. Don't talk about work. And then we just look at each other and we're like, oh. um, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> or it's like or like she'll work a shift and I'm like sitting at the dining room table, like with a candle lit and a. And a glass of whiskey and i'm like so what happened tonight yeah, yeah it's like, like the juice it's give, like a reality tv show give me the I tea <laughs> i will say though people always ask that and they're like you guys are crazy but it's how we met and it's kind of yeah. like what first attracted us to each of other course. we have we have a very shared vision mm -hmm. of what we want hospitality to look like yeah um so in a lot of ways it's much less hard than people would imagine because we didn't not work together and then start working together i don't recommend it for yeah. people who never work together don't yeah. You know, I don't want people to think, oh, it works for them. It could work for me. No, this is how we started. This also, is where we found each other. I also started cooking 15 years ago. So I'm, I started still in that spot of like, you're not going to survive in this business if you can't compartmentalize things. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty good at just being like, okay, 
Yeah. That's fine. Sure. Yeah. Can tomorrow happen yet? Like where it's just like service to service and then you could talk about it or not. And it doesn't really affect my life. It's like fine. You know what I mean? Like you get another shot to do it again the next day, which was the best part about being a line cook for me. It was like every day is a new All start of your mistakes are in the past. And a new finish. Yeah. And like made mistakes yesterday, but you get to start over today. Yeah. You're not like. There's very few things that we've like vehemently disagreed on either. Where like, like you're not like, I hate those candles. We absolutely have to have new candles. And I'm like, no, yeah. we absolutely, like there's never been anything like that yeah. that we just can't agree on. A lot of compromise. Yeah. Yeah. We can always figure it out. Yeah. But my next thing is how hard, it was the question, but I knew it was probably going to come up. Is how hard is it not to take that, the work home? Yeah. yeah. So do you just, when those occasions happen, you literally just stop each other or do you, is there like a healthy time limit you set to, to, to get work out and then be like, okay. I think Daniel's very smart. He knows that I need to get it out. Yeah. And until it's fully gotten <laughs> out, we're not moving on. Okay. Yeah. So he, he's very hard to, he doesn't hold a grudge either. So he'll let me fully have my emotional, whatever I need to do about it. And then he'll be like, okay. And then we'll go to bed and the next day it's done. That's great. Yeah. I recommend uh, living above a restaurant you work at. Don't do it. You live upstairs? No, but at Alimento we did. And you need, you need like the drive home. Oh yeah. Home oh yeah. No, like, you thank can't. you. Yeah. <laughs> to be able, I would just, oh, I, th at that point it would be hard not to become a psychopath and be yeah. like, D I just heard something. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, I'm downstairs. <laughs> I'm, uh, is everything okay? Or like you wake up and you're like, I could, I could start my prep now. Yeah. And then my day exactly. would be much better. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Why don't I just go, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just do dough right now. Yeah. It's no big deal. Yeah. Uh, so now we live like, two two and a half miles away from here yeah and i always tell everyone it's perfect it's just close yeah. enough if it's an actual problem yes and if it's not an actual problem oh i'm already home sorry yeah. guys yeah i'm in for the night i have yep. definitely come here in sweatpants though and fix broken locks and broken light bulbs oh my god there was course. once a, a storm so bad the wind blew open the back door because it's a screen door mm -hmm. there's another door that's locked and yeah. that was fine but like we have some equipment back there and it set off the security alarm. It blew both doors open. That's oh, crazy. It was so bad. Security alarm went off. It was two in the morning, and we looked at the cameras and we saw the doors open. Oh, it's terrifying. But I mean, luckily we have cameras everywhere, so we were like, okay, there's no human body in there. Everything's yeah. fine. And we still... saw the wind, and we were like, I totally get what happened. Yeah, yeah. Still shitty drove screen door. Over here, at two o'clock in the morning with we a did. baseball bat. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I'd, yeah, I'd still be coming in. Like, like <laughs> who's in here? <laughs> it's just me. The wind. Yeah. What has been the the most difficult thing about being an entrepreneur? That's a question for the entrepreneur, the prof professional person. I mean, I think financial security. I, I, yeah. we, we fantasize about having a job where somebody else pays the paycheck and you just don't worry about whether or not it's going to clear. There were so many times I ran payroll and I was like, okay, we're a little shy, so I'm not going to cash my check till Monday. And, you know, that is not a good feeling. The, yeah. the pressure of that, there's no way to explain it. Um, yeah. So I think financial, that's the biggest yeah. hurdle. The, the, like, you know, it's business phrase yeah. goes a long way. It's like hard to, yeah. I mean, there's a million rewards too. like the feeling you get when somebody comes in here and loves it. Or like you go to your friend's restaurant and they're like telling everybody how amazing you are in the kitchen staff. Like we just did a pop-up with Bertie G's and Jeremy Fox did this beautiful speech about how much he loves Ronan. Like Jeremy Fox, Jesus Christ. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> that meant so much, mm -hmm. but that doesn't pay your bills. Yes, so yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's th funny. there's a million rewards, but that, that constant stress of the bank account is you have to, you have to be really tough to handle that. Don't be an entrepreneur if you're not ready for that. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to that quote that I stole from Eater where yeah. it's like, you, you really probably gotta, you gotta love what you do yeah. to be in this industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for some checks to bounce. Yeah. If it hasn't happened yet to you. <laughs> uh, for the last question, this is the most important question in the podcast. Oh boy. This is for both of you. Both have to answer it. Okay. Uh, who is the greatest artist or band of all time? <laughs> what? <laughs> I love this. Our answers are going to be so different. Uh, I mean, there's so many genres and so many. So that's the hardest personal, question personal ever. I would to say um, Freddie Mercury and Queen. Oof, wonderful answer. This is when Daniel's going to like get those divorce papers ready. He's like one thing about me. <laughs> I, I don't know music that well. I wasn't brought up with music. My parents aren't into music. So literally songs from the 70s, 80s will come on. And he'll be like, mm -hmm. like maybe, who sings this? I'm like, I have absolutely no fucking idea. Duran Duran I say time. Duran Duran every time. It's the only band <laughs> I can think wolf. of. Yeah. 
Um, but I'm a Swifty, so I'm going with Taylor Swift. I, I love, love my it. girl. <laughs> I love it. I think she's doing great things for. I love Taylor Swift too. That's why that yeah. question is really that's a hard question. Yeah. Every time somebody has like reverted it back on me, I've given a different answer every time. Yeah. yeah. Because there is no right answer. Because oh, no. like Boston is great. The band Just Boston. Just another band out of Boston. Um, Boston, Chicago. But then Chicago. I really like electronic music too. So like Infected Mushroom is great. Mm -hmm. um, all, so it's so hard. I can't believe you asked that question. It's going to stress me out all day. I He's going to wake up in the middle of the night thinking, mm -hmm. I should have yeah. said. Just said David Bowie, God damn it. Good, you can just text me. I'll put it in the intro. I got a text from Daniel at 3.34 a.m. And it he says. He changed his answer. And yes. another one yes. at 4.55. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's the replacements. All right. Well, where do we go to get in touch? Ronan is at 7315 Melrose Avenue. And slide into the DMs. It's me. I'm here. And if you want catering, just go to the website. Uh, yeah. Go to the website, email us, holler at roninla.com. And once again, it's just me. <laughs> it's just me, the professional yeah. person. Thank <laughs> you guys so much for your time. This Thank was you. super rad. Thanks for yeah. having us. Yeah.